Okay, we have here an example on Faraday's law. So we have a rectangular loop, uh, this rectangular loop here, okay? It has, uh, a, uh, this length here is 2 meters, this one is 0.5 meters, okay? And it is moving away, in the, it's moving in the y direction, um, so it's moving away from the z axis here, moving in the y direction. And the velocity is constant, it's 5 ay meter per second. But there is, it, and it's moving in a, in, a, in a magnetic field. And this magnetic field does not really change with time, it's changing with space. So uh, you can see it's 0.2 e to the minus 0.1y, e to the minus 0.1y uh, az. So this electric field gets weaker as you move in the y direction. Okay? And they are telling us they created a tiny cut here and they put a resistance of 5, uh, five ohms. They would like us to find the current I at the instant when we have um, Y, let's see here, I can see, you see, the value of Y is equal to 2 meters, okay? So, uh, as we agreed, this whole thing is moving in the Y direction. So, why, why is this edge here? Why is this edge, it, it was 0, and then it's 1, and then it's 2, the whole thing is moving. So, Y is increasing with, y is increasing with time. So, you want us to calculate the current I going through in this loop, okay, at the time y equal to 2 meters. Okay, let's see what's happening here. You have field B going through this loop. It's going to create a flux. The flux is the integral of B dot ds. We can carry out the integral over this uh, service. This integral will be dx dy. Uh, the ds here is dx dy in the z direction. That's fine. But because B is, is decreasing in the Y direction, as the loop moves forward in the Y direction, the Epsi, the flux, the integral of B dot ds is actually getting weaker with time. Because the, the whole loop is moving in the Y direction, then the flux going through it is decreasing with time because B is getting weaker along the Y direction. So here there is really an implicit dependence on Y on the time, because the magnetic field is a function of y, but as the, as the loop is moving, it's going through weaker and weaker magnetic field, okay? Then epsi is actually decreasing with time. So our target here, we have b, we have to apply Faraday's law, we have to carry out the integral of b dot ds to get epsi, we get epsi, epsi will be a function of y, but y is a function of time, because y is if you are moving at a, at a constant speed of 5 in the y direction, then I can simply say y of the left, of the left, left, left edge is 5t plus the initial y. Okay? If you see that, you see it from here, if you get the derivative dy by dt, which is the velocity, is going to give you 5. Okay? So if you integrate this, this will give you that this is y of the left edge at any time. What is y note? Y note is the location of the left edge at time zero. But we really don't have to worry about it here uh, because I need only the rate of derivative, dy by dt. Okay, let's start solve the question. We have b, let's integrate to get epsi. Epsi is a function of y. We'll integrate, we'll differentiate epsi relative to t. But of course, epsi is a function of y. Then we have to apply the chain rule to get partial epsi partial t. Both that with a negative sign. And of course, because of the direction we assumed for the integration, this is the reference polarity, positive, negative of our uh, integration. So uh, because I assume that the normal is in the z direction to the service, then this is my direction of integration. And these are the references. So if I get a positive current, this means that the current is flowing this way, okay, from left to right, okay, because this term will be higher than this one. Okay, so this is the first method for solving this problem. I'm going to solve the second one in uh, my tutorial video, which is going to follow this one. Um, I'm just showing here a top view of the, of the loop. So the loop is moving in this direction, okay, in the y direction. Z is now coming out from the page. This is the magnetic field coming out from the page. This is, this is the direction of integration. Then this is the reference polarity of the voltage. And ds is coming out from the page as well. Let's calculate the psi. Epsi is the integral over the area of the loop B dot ds. If this edge, we call this edge y, then this is y plus 0.5, because this whole width is 0.5. Uh, 
then the bounds are y will change the y will change from y to y plus 0.5 and the x will change from here to here from minus 1 to 1 remember this whole length here is 2 then this from minus 1 to 1 the integral of dx is not a problem because uh, dx will give you x both upper limit minus lower limit you get 2 you multiply 2 by 0.2 okay you multiply 2 by 0.2 you end up getting uh, 0.4, which we have it here. Now we integrate e to the minus 0.1y dy. So you divide by minus 0.2y e to the minus 0.1y. Both upper limit minus lower limit and the organize. This is what you'll end up having. So this is the expression of the flux going through the um, loop. You will notice that that flux is always positive. But its, its derivative is always negative. Why? Because as the loop moves in this direction, it's going through weaker and weaker field. Then the flux going through is getting weaker and weaker. It's still pointing in the z direction out from the page. That's why if psi is positive, but its rate of change is negative. Okay, so now let's calculate the EMF. EMF from Faraday's law is minus the rate of change of the flux. But the flux function of y, but y is a function of t. So we say it's minus if psi partial t which is equal to minus epsilon partial y partial y partial t and as i said y which is the left edge here is moving as a velocity of five then we can write it as five t plus y naught one y naught is the location of this left edge at time zero so uh, i can simply replace dy by dt by the velocity which is five here and now if you differentiate this one relative to y um so partial epsilon partial y you get minus 0.1 e to the minus 0.1y, and you get plus 0.1 e to the minus 0.1y plus 0.5. So this is what we have here. You multiply 5 by minus 4, you're going to get uh, minus 2. We move it to the inside of the bracket, we end up with this expression that you see here. So this is the EMF in volts. And this EMF, by the way, is going to be positive. Why? Because the flux is decreasing. Because the flux is decreasing. Then if you connect the resistance between these two terminals here, then the current must be flowing in this direction. Why? Because if the current flows in this direction, then the, it, it will, the current will be flowing in the counterclockwise direction. Then it's going to create a magnetic field also coming out from the page. It's trying to help the weakening flux according to Faraday's law. Okay, the last step is to calculate the current. The current is the EMF created divided by the resistance. And if the EMF is positive, the current will be in this direction. So I divided this expression by 5 ohm because the total uh, R is 5. Uh, then this is what you'll have here. And you get this expression 15.8 milliamperes. We could have obtained this same result by treating this problem as four pieces of wire. Okay. And each one of them is creating its own potential. Each one of them is creating in a, in a magnetic field. It's creating its own potential. And then if we sum all these potentials in all directions, we are going to get the same expression for the EMF. And then we divide it by 5, you get the same current. I'm going to reserve this, 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 um, this other solution to the tutorial. So I'm going to be sharing it in the video that's going to follow this one.